Welcome back. You're watching Showdown, where I'm joined out of Brisbane by Stuart Robert. Stuart, a lot of right-wing fans on Twitter, they think that you are smashing uh, the three lefties over here. I, I don't include myself in that. Thoughts? <laughs> no response. Just silent <laughs> confidence, Michael Danby. Well, he's welcome to it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring the panel in. Let's, let's mm -hmm. start. I want to talk about Huawei. Is that how you pronounce it? Huawei. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Michael Danby, you have been uh, a pretty big critic of China. There's divisions inside both parties about this, isn't there? On the Labor side, there are um, critics of China and there are strong supporters of China. On the coalition side, same thing happens. Uh, what's, the, what's the essence of your criticism? Well, there's, there's a difference between opposing uh, Chinese direct investment in Australia, which I strongly support and I think we should be absolutely colour blind over, and I encourage as much as Japanese and American investment, and I think both parties should do that, and I think certainly the government does, and a, uh, an organisation which, um, on a risk-based ass assessment by uh, the, the Australian government, after receiving advice from ASIO and other intelligence services, has decided not to let uh, this company bid for the spinal cord of uh, the uh, uh, Australian so telecommunications system. So what do you think we should system. do with them as a company? Well, we should encourage them to be involved in other things, but we shouldn't let them be involved in the central nervous system of Australian telecommunications. And frankly, the opposition are hopelessly divided over this. There's uh, George Brandis and Philip Ruddock on, on one side, and Malcolm Turnbull uh, and Julie Bishop despite all of these revelations that were in the Financial Review on, uh, on Friday by the uh, former director of the CIA, uh, General Hayden, um, blithely saying that they're going to uh, have a review into whether uh, the uh, Huawei should be involved in the NBN. And what this is, is Peter, is lowest common denominator, uh, no national interest, no interest in national security, the lowest price uh, wins the, the bid as far as some of the Liberals are concerned. Stuart, Robert, how do you respond to that? You come from an army intelligence background as I understand it. What's your view on Huawei? Well, our view is you actually take the professional's word as it comes. So if the National Security Committee uh, has actually put together a brief to the government that we haven't seen that raises concerns they need to be listened to. So one of the first things we'll be doing, uh, if we are to win uh, the, the election, is actually look at that advice that has come from the National Security Committee uh, and from the National Security Community, and we'll make an assessment based on that advice. Now, let me bring the panel in on this. Uh, it is both sides of politics are divided, Peter Bentley. I know that Michael Danby likes to make it a message about the coalition, but both sides of politics are divided in terms of how we should approach China as well as how we should approach some Chinese government-owned enterprises, including Huawei? I, I think uh, when we're, if we're looking at Huawei and others that uh, have strong links to uh, the Chinese government, obviously, and I agree with Stuart's point that we need to uh, let the professionals in terms of ASIO, OASIS, uh, make recommendations. They're doing that to government. Uh, when it comes to national security, that's vital. But I think there is kind of a broader issue that we have to be aware of that we aren't seeing either xenophobic uh, or, or even competitors at a local level painting, trying to paint all Chinese corporations in that space. And, and we've seen that uh, at an agricultural level with Chinese investment seeking to make significant investments in agricultural lands. We've seen that uh, in a whole range of different kind of fundamental service sector roles. And for a country that is seeking more foreign investment, uh, this is how we have historically grown over the last 200 years, uh, and particularly being so well placed as we are in the Asian century, I think we have to always ensure that there are legitimate debates to be had, and, and we should have those, but we shouldn't ever let this flow over into tarring all Chinese corporations or all Chinese com companies, because not only does that have a detrimental impact for the Australian national interest, but it also has problems with our trade relations in the long term. Yeah. Hugh McDermott? Yeah, I've been... China, the US and the other countries are, are vitally important uh, parts of our economy as we are as part of the global economy. So, you know, it, what the key thing here is national security. Now, whether it be Chinese or whether it be Indonesian or any other country, it doesn't really matter, including the US, um, if our national interests are questioned on a, on a national security basis, then yes, we should intercede. But, you know, if it doesn't, then we should promote more foreign invest direct investment. Um, and, you know, that's really what the debate is about here, is that we want more and more investment. Um, and China is a key part of our economy, but we just have to make sure that 
when companies do come in and they do win um, contracts that uh, impact on our national assets, that there isn't any security issues with it. And if there is, then they need to be removed. All right, Michael Danby, final word on this subject. Well, you know, I'm, I think that's a very sound point, point of view that um, we ought to have a colour blind attitude to Chinese investment in Australia, including in, in agriculture. But Stuart got off too lightly, and his right wing mates may be sort of twittering here in his support or tweeting in his support. But the, the coalition is absolutely irresponsible in the way they would allow the NBN to uh, uh, be accessed by uh, Huawei. If, if can you imagine well, if hang on a second. Let, let me go to Stuart Robert on that. I mean, isn't your point, uh, Mr. Robert, that 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 pending getting in government, uh, you will take a look at the sort of references that Michael Danby has referred to, and that could be up for review. But it would take you to be the incumbents to to make that sort of a decision. In opposition, you don't get the opportunity to be briefed by the head of ONA or the head of DSD or DIO or DIGO or the full intelligence community. So if we are graced with government, we will sit there, listen to, take heed of and respect the full national security advice we get. That's, Stuart, a, fair, that's a fair point, aren't, isn't Aren't you, your guys speaking to you? You know, Julie Bishop and uh, Malcolm Turnbull both got briefings from the Director General of Security because they regarded this issue as so serious. And uh, even after that, they said that uh, there should be a review of whether Huawei is allowed to, uh, to visit, f to, to, to uh, bid for the NBN. And only this weekend, despite the intervention of General Hayden, the former director of the CIA, saying that this company was a danger to national security in this narrow telecommunications era, I accept the point about uh, b being uh, open to Chinese investment in, in other well, the areas. The Chinese that, that, ambassador, that, that, though, has come out and said that none of this is true. Well, for a start, what Michael, there is, no direct, there is no Director General of Security. There's a DEPSEC Security Intelligence. There's a Director General of ONA. Uh, they're some of the, or two of the most senior people uh, in the community. Well, I'm sorry, it's a so common first expression, of all, Stuart, understand the don't, community don't, you're talking about. Don't, don't, don't be a... Uh, you're too nice a guy to be a smart aleck on this. Um, the, uh, that's a uh, common way of referring to the... To the uh, Mr Irvine, who's the head of ASIO, who you know very well has met with uh, uh, your Julie Bishop and uh, Malcolm Turnbull. But hang on, let me ask you this question, Michael Danby. Let's leave that as a comment. Uh, this is the comment from the Chinese ambassador. Ba ambassador, facts speak louder than words. There may be some people doing things the article referred to. This is about Huawei's activities. But it is not Huawei or China for sure. That's the ambassador. Um, well, uh, Huawei has a Communist Party committee that is the head of the, uh, at the company. It is considered a national champion and gets $30 billion of soft loans a year. Why do you reckon the Chinese state is doing that? Because uh, they're a charity? Mm. All right, we're going to move on. We're, we're going to move on. Peter Bentley and Hugh McDermott, you guys were strongly advocating for a Kevin Rudd comeback. Do you sit here very smugly next to your Labor mate, Michael Danby, and say, what the hell were you doing back in Julie no, not at all. I mean, I came out and supported um, Rudd some time ago and got a bit of stick for it, uh, especially from Gillard's office. But no, I mean, um, members of caucus have, have to make a decision of what they see there and then. I'm from Western Sydney. I was representing my, my membership in Western Sydney. And I'll say this, you know, they were saying Rudd. Now, people in Victoria and other places were saying the opposite. So, you know... So is Victoria in for a tough time, Michael Danby, at the next election, having lost a local Prime Minister? Um, look, of course, people uh, were partisan for uh, Julia Gillard in, in Victoria, but I also think that they, uh, the, the polls are up everywhere for uh, the Labor Party, including Victoria, for Kevin Rudd, and we're competitive in marginal seats in, in uh, Melbourne, which we might not have been uh, aiming at uh, beforehand. So Stuart will need to come and visit the southern states a lot more and spend less <laughs> time in Queensland, and I'm going up to the Queensland coast along with a lot of other uh, uh, parliamentary secretaries and ministers to try and take some seats off them. That's what the Prime Minister thinks can be done. Stuart Robert, are you worried about the uh, coalition party room uh, having reduced representation from Queensland no matter what happens at the next election? Because even if Labor does lose and go down fighting in states such as Tasmania, New South Wales and Victoria, it looks like uh, Kevin Rudd has the capacity to draw on a bit of parochialism in your home state and pick up a few seats. I'm looking forward to coming and debating Michael Danby in... Uh in Melbourne ports after that kind invitation. I'm looking forward to coming and seeing Nick Champion in South Australia. And now that 40% of all Australian-made cars which are sold through employee share schemes are now at risk 
uh, because of the FBT cuts. I am certainly looking forward to the opportunity uh, to debating after that lovely kind invitation from my good friend, Mr. Danby. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come and host it. Sounds the great. People. I'll come and host it and watch a footy game while I'm down there. <laughs> this is from the guys who want to cut $500 million from the auto yeah. industry as part of their plan. Yeah. Well, hang on a sec. Peter Bentley, let me ask you about the fringe benefits tax is. announcement. The, the, mm. the word is that Treasury had been bowling this up time and time again, uh, and even Wayne Swan could see what was wrong with it and wasn't prepared to embrace it yet. <laughs> Voila! The, in comes uh, Chris Bowen and Kevin Rudd, and business? they go for it. Well, Peter, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, no, uh, this is a streamlining of an entirely sensible People policy. People have already lost their jobs because of it. Well, Peter, this is... This is the, the whole point that we need to remember with this debate is this isn't money that's just kind of appearing that's subsidising people's tax bills. Whenever people get a, a write-off and a tax concession, yeah. all the rest of us that aren't benefiting from that are paying for it through increased taxes ourselves or through lost services. Now, if you have a legitimate reason to be claiming that for work purposes, that's fine. But it's not particularly so, onerous to say once every five years for a three-month period, tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think that is so onerous, then I think it's a pretty fair bet that you're rorting the system. But they're, but they're not that's rorting. Right. There was a rule in place that you could take a 20% claim without providing any evidence right. via a logbook. That's been adjusted. Absolutely. It wasn't that's a right. rort. It no, was no, the sorry, way the sorry, system sorry, was. No, this sorry. is my point. And it let me be very clear. Rort. I'm not accusing anyone previously of rorting, but I'm saying if you are in a position where you say it is so onerous over every five-year period to spend three months logging what you're doing with your car, that is so onerous that I'm yeah. not going to claim this deduction, then I would say there's a pretty fair chance that you weren't yeah. entitled we to it. We are right out of time. I, Last comment, Hugh McDermott. I will say it is a rort. There's been plenty of tradies and other people <laughs> doing these logbooks for years. When I was when I had a car, I used to, have to do the logbook and that for the union. The reality is, is that if you've been claiming this, then you shouldn't have been. Now, I think the it's actually crocodile is tears. Making... No, wait a sec. Have you had your say? <laughs> uh, crocodile <laughs> tears for the Liberals we, to be going on about the car industry. Everyone has had their say. They were going to destroy I have a 10 second a countdown. Party, it wouldn't be it. And we you're are, you're at, we are out of time. As it go along. Yeah. What are, you guys need uh, is a plan, uh, a real uh, solutions plan. That actually might There you go. You got it on screen. Take you down the Holden factory. All right, explain the time out there. Stuart Robert, thanks very much. Stuart Robert, thanks very much. Thanks very much for your company. You can to that, We're going to go to an ad break. I'm just going to thank all three Labor what people at one time. Thanks for your company. <laughs> See you on Friday for Contrarians.